So what I am here today to talk about, friends, is the fact that so often people don't know where to begin to start and grow a business. We set out with this great idea and we want to accomplish our goals and our mission related to this idea to start a business, but we don't know where to begin. And then what happens is there is this inundation of information coming in at us. And part of that's our own fault, right? Because we spend time on social media, we spend time Googling, and we get distracted. So if you have been struggling with knowing where to begin to start and grow a business, then you're in the right place today because with all of the chaos online, it's so easy to get distracted. And what happens when you get distracted is you get confused and then you get discouraged. And oftentimes people fail before they even begin. And some of the reasons that that happens is that you don't start with a foundation first. You jump in with both feet. I just had a client recently, um, we were in our one-to-one -one call and it was the very beginning part of when we were working together. And she's like, oh, I have all these podcast interviews lined up. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful, that's great. But do you have an onboarding process so that if someone comes to you from that podcast interview, you can bring them on as a client right away? And it will be smooth sailing. And she just froze. Nope, she didn't have that. And this happens more times than not that people get so gung ho with their business and they think the very first thing to do is to jump on social media and start telling everybody about their business, which is awesome. The excitement is incredible. And we definitely need that excitement and the positive energy. But the problem is, if we don't build the foundation first, we can't go anywhere. And that is the number one problem that I see with people starting and growing a business. So I am here today to help you. If you don't know where to begin to start and grow your business, then you're going to find all of these tips so incredibly helpful. So let's dive in. The very, very first thing that you want to do is you want to outline and create your personal brand. Your personal brand is that perception that other people have of you. And you have the luxury of controlling that through all of your branding efforts. So the things we're going to talk about today are part of that branding effort, differentiating yourself amongst everybody else in your expertise, your niche, and really letting people know who you are so that you can become memorable, recognizable, and shareable. But before, or but right after you have outlined and created your personal brand, you've really done the work to say, okay, this is what makes me unique. This differentiates me from everybody else. And if you're struggling with what differentiates you, make a list of every single experience that you've had on your journey in your life, work, everything to get to where you are today. Because all of those experiences are giving you the the expertise you need, but that's differentiating you from everybody else in your space because no one else has had the same journey as you. No one else has had the same incredible experiences that you've had that have brought you right to where you are today to be able to serve the people that God's calling you to serve. So that's the very first part of any business is creating your personal brand. From there, we I'm going to talk about five different strategies or elements that are critical for building a foundation first. And when I talk about building a foundation first, we're talking about, we're laying the bricks. You don't go out and run a marathon without training. You have to put your shoes on first. Sometimes you have to buy the shoes first, right? So you have to start someplace. And that's it's exactly the same thing with a business. You start and then you build one block at a time. And when I talk about building that solid foundation, the very first step is your faith. Ask the Lord to be the foundation of your business and build your business on him. Because when you are aligned with your values and when you are depending on God to guide you every step of the way, you can't fail. You will learn from mistakes inevitably. We have free will, we'll make choices, and then we have to backpedal a little bit. But my whole mission is to teach you what you need to know so that you don't have to backpedal. You can start with the foundation and then build from there. 
But the very first step in that is bringing God into your business, because the more you depend on the Holy Spirit to guide you, the more you're going to succeed. You're going to make the right decisions. You're not going to spend time overthinking because you're going to have that basis, that core that is part of you to build from. So if you think about it with us, things may seem impossible, but with God, everything is possible. So it's really important to bring him front and center in your business. And I'm not when I say front and center, I don't mean like screaming that you're a Christian and saying you're only going to work with Christian people. What I'm saying is go to him for the advice and the direction that you need. When you start with searching on social media and looking at what other people are doing, you're not going to grow. You're going to end up in a state of confusion and doubt. And when you're in a state of confusion and doubt, you lack confidence, you lack clarity, And if you lack those, then you're lacking trust in yourself. You're lacking trust in your decisions and you're lacking. And then therefore the people that you want to hire you aren't trusting you because if you're confused and not confident, they're going to be confused and not confident. One of my coaches loves to use the phrase confusion breeds confusion. So if you're not starting in that place of your faith and depending on God to lead you, because he's the one that's put this calling on your heart, depend on him to give you the tools the energy, the knowledge, the wisdom, everything you need to grow your business versus going to social media and seeking out what other people are doing. Because just because they're doing it doesn't mean it aligns with your values, your visions, and your passions. So you have to stay with that, the foundation of your faith. Okay, the second thing is to do mindset work from the very beginning. I see this happen all the time where people are all gung ho, but then all of a sudden, all the chaos online comes into play. All of the comparison comes into play. There's already people doing what we do. I mean, there's a million coaches out there. I'm not unique in the fact that I'm a coach, a business coach, but there are certain things that definitely differentiate me from everybody else in the coaching industry. One, I'm very strategic. Two, I'm very creative. It's often not possible. It's, or it's often not seen that those two go hand in hand, but not only that, my experiences have lent, have given me the expertise with mindset as well. So when you're talking about strategy, creativity, and mindset, the ability to help other people have a positive mindset, that's like amazing to have all of it under one roof. So That's just an example of differentiating. But if I wasn't doing the mindset work, seeing that there are a million other coaches out there would cause me to to doubt whether I'm on the right path, doing the right thing. Um, Will people hire me? Because there's so many other people, there's so many other options out there. So instead of letting those doubts, the, the overwhelm, the overthinking come into play, Face them up front, do the mindset work to navigate all of those negative inputs that you're going to experience throughout your journey. And the reason it's so critical to do this, this work every single day to map out everything that's positive versus letting the negative take over and letting the doubt inundate, inundate you with fear and a lack of confidence, it it's just so important to start from the beginning because if you don't, here's what can happen. So I have one of my um, one-to-one coaching clients. We were working together the other day and she said, I don't think my pricing is, is right. I think it's too high. And I was blown away by this concept because we worked really hard to create her packages, to create her, her pricing structure. And it is so on point with industry standards. And especially for the quality of work that she provides. But she had had this, I don't want to say negative experience, but this iffy experience. And it led her down this track of, oh no, people aren't going to hire me because I I charge too much and I can't provide what they want and blah, 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 blah. And she went down this negative cycle of that one thought about her her pricing, took her down, drug her to the basement of despair and doubt and over her business model. And there was no need for it. 
But this is how our brain will do. If you spend time consuming content on social media or other platforms that are not aligned with your values, your visions, and your passions and where you want to take your business, this is what happens. The brain is going to tell you all kinds of just muck. And so it's important to navigate that every single day. And I will... Um, this, this live training is actually, I'm actually going to publish this on the podcast and on YouTube as well. So for anybody watching the replay, replay, you can always head over to the website, therobingram.com for anybody who's listening, um, on the podcast, I will have everything in the show notes so that you can actually have links to access additional information related to how to do this mindset work on a daily basis, how to create a personal brand and everything else I'm talking about. There will be links in the show notes or the blog post that will guide you on additional information. You can also email me um, if you have uh, questions or shoot me a DM, whatever works best for you. All right, so we talked about um, faith. We talked about doing the mindset work. Do not wait to do that mindset work because you need to build that mental um, endurance for the journey to start and grow your business. All right, so the third thing is that before you do anything else, it's so important to start with your systems and processes, your SOPs, your which standard operating procedures, Create your package, your main key package, the offer that you are going to spend the majority of your time, energy, and efforts to sell, and set your pricing. There are so many little nuances that you need to do up front before you can even accept a client. And it's important to have these things set in stone that everything mapped out so that number one, if you can't show up someday, somebody else can step in and take over for you. When you go to start hiring a team, you need to have all these things in place. Before you can take on a client, you've got to be able to onboard them and have a process in place that is smooth and efficient. Because what happens if you don't have an onboarding process in place and you have someone interested in working with you, you are going to be frantic trying to get everything in order, a contract for them to sign, how do you do that? How, all of these things are going to be inundating you and you're going to start to doubt, oh no, I'm messing up. This person's not going to trust me anymore. They're not going to like me. All of these things, thoughts are going to come into play. So it's really important to have all of these processes and systems mapped out before you start marketing so that you're prepared. The second that per first client comes here to hire you, you are set, ready to go efficiently, and in a way that is going to build the trust with them. And then they're going to be more likely to become a referral source for you. The easier make, you make it for them, the easier it's going to be for them to refer you to someone else. It's critical to have those systems and processes in place. Okay. The fourth thing is that you need a website. You do not need social media. I know, I know, I know. Everybody says, start on social media, start on social media, but it's not necessary. And here's why. If you think about it, if you are comparing two businesses and one has a website and one is running their business off of Facebook, which one's going to appeal to you? Which one is going to lend credibility? Which one's going to make you trust them more? Which one is going to nurture you more to be able to get to know them, build an emotional connection with them and trust them? It's going to be the website every single time. There are so many things you can do with a website that are so incredibly powerful for bringing in your audience, warming them up and converting them to clients. So when you think about doing your website, you want to make sure that it's SEO optimized, search engine optimization. You want to make sure that that is on your website, ready to go so Google can find you. You also want to have blog posts on your website. Why? Because that shows your expertise. It shows you are an authority in your niche. And it's really important to build that foundation based on that authority. And you do that on your website. When you have a website and a place for people to find you and come and get to know more about you from your homepage, your about page, your services page, to be able to contact you through your website from a contact page, these are so, this is so incredibly important. And when you add the blog post in, you increase that level of search engine optimization and you increase the opportunity for people to find you. Okay, 
The fifth thing is that you want to build your email list. So if you are just starting out, which a lot of you are, because I, I see this in the Facebook group, especially where people say, you know, they'll, they'll tell me where they are in their entrepreneurial journey. And so many people say, I'm new to entrepreneurship and I don't know where to begin. If you don't know where to begin, once you have put all of these other things in place, you have prayed and asked God to bless your business. You've asked the Holy Spirit to come in and guide you and, and share his wisdom with you. You have done the mindset work on a daily basis to keep your thoughts and energy positive so that your emotions are positive and your feelings are positive and you're taking that intentional effective action. And then you build your website. Once those things are done, you can invite your community. We all have an email list from that includes family, friends, maybe a teachers, coaches, um, religious leaders, pastors, whatever it may be. You have people in your network. You have a community already. People who know you, love you, and trust you. People who are already warmed up to you and willing to share you because they do trust you. So start your email list with those people that are already in your community. Invite them to follow along on your new journey. And if they don't want to, give them the option to unsubscribe from your email list. But start, you have to start somewhere. So those people that you know, love you and trust you and will be interested in what you're doing, interested in how you're expanding your life, transforming your life and offering transformation to other people through the services that you're going to be providing, you can invite them in on your journey. Start with the community you already have. Share with your neighbors, with other people, what you're doing, and then ask them if you can add them to your email list. But start with the people that already know you, love you, and trust you, because then that becomes a referral source. The more that you build your business and create content on your blog and start sharing that on other platforms, the more people are going to want to share the word for you and that your, your current community will become your best referral source because they already trust you. And who knows, there may be people in your community already that you didn't even realize, but they need your service. So when you don't know where to begin, I'm going to tell you that you begin with these five steps. You ignore social media until these five things are done. Then if you choose to be on social media and use that as a place to build relationships, great. But because of the nature of social media, I do not encourage you to start your business on social media. And I do not encourage you to start posting on social media until you can direct those people back to your website. Now, the one thing I didn't mention, and I want to make sure I mention this, is that when you're talking about or when you're creating blog posts for your website, make sure you always have a call to action on those or in those blog posts at the end. Make sure that you're inviting them to your email list. So if you can create, and this should be one of those things like that are part of your like systems and processes, right? And your email marketing strategy is to create something that you can give them about your expertise, some kind of value, create a little mini ebook that people can then come to your website and download. Or you can put the link to it in your blog post because then that's going to grow your email list as well. And the more value you provide, the more likely people are to trust you. The more they get to know you and you can use that as a guide to bring them in and then nurture them through your email marketing plans and strategies, the more they're going to be likely to convert to become paying clients. So these are just a few strategies, five, right? Five basic strategies, places for you to start. I just encourage you to take this information to heart because if you don't know where to begin and you're struggling, social media is not the place to start because all that is going to do is drag you down into this place of doubt and despair because you're going to see all of these other people doing what you do. And so you're, and what happens then is if you're not doing the mindset work, comparison sets in and then doubt sets in even greater, the more comparison, the more doubt, the more imposter syndrome, the more confused that you become. And anytime you are confused, then you're not going to trust yourself. We know that clarity and calm and confidence 
are what are going to breed success. So you want to make sure that you're avoiding any distractions. When you do these things, you're going to have that foundation laid. And then the sky becomes the limit with where you post. But start with that place that you own, your website. Create that content there and then repurpose it out. Repurposing will be key because you want to have something as a cornerstone that you own. And that becomes your, your website. If you, you can obviously do a website yourself. Um, I strongly encourage you to have professional eyes on that, a professional website developer or copywriter so that when you're putting information out, you're putting it out in a way that truly resonates with your ideal audience. There are a lot of things that you can do as you're setting up your systems and processes and procedures. You want to make sure that one of those steps is outlining who your ideal client is and so that you can write copy to make sure that it is resonating with them, that they understand that you're talking to them, that you understand their pain points, that you know exactly what it is that um, they need from you and that you are the one to provide the solution for them. Some of those questions that you can ask about your your ideal client is, you know, what, what are their pain points? What do they need? What do you need from them? You, of course, want them to believe in you, to believe in your offer, to invest in you, to trust you. And then what do you, what do you know about them that you can solve the problems for them going forward? So think about all of those things when you think about who your ideal client is and really do a deep dive into who that person is. And this goes hand in hand with your, when you're working on your personal brand and when you're working on your systems and processes and who you're going to communicate to and then drafting all that copy for your website. So it's very, very important to know if you're creating a website, who are you creating that for and who do you want to find it helpful, informative, and all of those good luscious things that need to happen in order for those people to warm up to you and then convert to paying clients. Okay, you guys, this is the basis of my entire coaching method is, you know, I've got my success equation, which is mindset, strategy, and action equals results. So what you've heard today are, we've talked about mindset, we've talked about strategy, and we've talked about taking action. If you start with building the foundation first, if you came here today and you did not know where to begin or you questioned where your business was, if you don't feel like your business is growing at the rate it should be, you need to take a step back and go back to the foundation because the foundation is key if you want to have a lifelong potential for success. And that is, you know, recurring clients attracting new clients, being able to grow, creating new offers, all of those things depend on building the foundation first. So start there. And the purpose results method is the key to all of that. There, I go into so much detail um, in the purpose to results method. And that leads me to tell you a little bit about, I don't want to forget to tell you about the Purpose to Results Academy that I will be launching in January. And these are the types of things that we're going to be doing is establishing that foundation. And I will be teaching you all the nuances of each of these five things that will then allow you to have that solid foundation so that the sky is the limit for your success and the success of your clients as well. You guys, I have enjoyed being with you today. If you have any questions or comments, I'm actually doing this recording, this live on Zoom today. So I can't see the questions and stuff that are in the, the comments, but I will definitely be looking at that as you watch on the replay or if you listen on the podcast, you're always welcome to go into the Purpose to Results group, Facebook group, and ask questions there. You can send me an email at info at the Robin or you can follow me um, on LinkedIn and you can ask me questions there as well. I'm happy to help you in any way I possibly can. Again, all of this information is going to be on the blog. So if you have questions, you can also go there to tap into a little bit different or not different, but additional resources. And I, as I said, I'm always happy to, to have a conversation with you or help you by email. So reach out if you have questions and I will... See you next week when I'm here to go live again.
Thanks for being here. And I appreciate every single one of you. If you are just beginning, or even if you feel stuck in the, in the middle of your journey, creating your business, don't fret because the answers are there. And if you start with asking God to bless you, you will have all the answers and everything will flow from there.